Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? We'll get started in uh, just a couple minutes here. Uh, we'll let a few more people join uh, since we're a couple minutes early. Um, so I'm located in central Canada, and it's been a bit of a strange week. We've had uh, a lot of snow over the last few days. Um, but it looks like next week it's going to go above freezing again. So as much snow as we have right now, it looks like it's going to be pretty sloppy and wet. So <laughs> let me know in the chat maybe where you're calling in from and, and how things are there. Let me know in the chat uh, what type of projects you're working on and what role you have on projects. I'll just pull up the chat here too so I can see your comments coming in. My background is I'm an electrical engineer. I've worked in the, the power industry, the aerospace industry, and the wastewater treatment plant industry. So a variety of several different types of projects. And I've got an excellent presentation for you today. Okay, looks like everything's going here, connected. Hopefully everyone can hear me. And it's great when technology works. Okay, just a little bit more and we'll get started here right away. Let me just share my screen. Okay. And there we go. Awesome. So right at the top of the hour, we can get started. So thanks everyone for joining me here today. Today we're going to talk about how to plan and execute capital project commissioning so that you can stop losing time at the end of your projects. You're about to get the number one project management framework to lead and manage commissioning. So this presentation is meant to be interactive. Um, if at any point in time you have a question, just shoot it in the chat. I've got the chat window up here. I'll watch and answer any questions that come up. We'll also have a Q&A at the end. So if we don't get your question answered, if you want to save them to the end, we can go through your questions at the end of the project, at the end of the presentation. And uh, But feel free at any point to just shoot your question in the chat and uh, I'll get your question answered. Now... I've used the commissioning project management frameworks that we're going to discuss today on several different projects. I've used the commissioning project management frameworks in the power industry. Uh, I've worked on generation and transmission projects in the power industry, hydroelectric generation and HVDC transmission. I've used these frameworks in the aerospace industry, working on satellites and rockets for the Canadian Space Agency. I've used these frameworks in the water treatment industry, um, expanding and upgrading a wastewater treatment plant facility. I'm also on the organizing committee for the Commissioning Professional Society, where we host an annual event and discuss some of the challenges that are faced in the commissioning industry and how we can elevate the importance of commissioning on projects. And I'm not the only one getting results with this approach to commissioning. Through our training, I've helped several others get the same results through uh, the training programs that we offer. For example, Sheldon or Jonald or Kale or several others, once they complete our program, they tell me that this was an eye-opener. They had no idea what was fully involved in properly planning for commissioning. They tell me that this was the most interesting an applicable course they've taken in years with lots of practical information. This is not theoretical stuff. They tell me that this is the first commissioning explanation they've found that fully matches with what really happens at site. And that's because it is. It's based on real world experience. This isn't textbook stuff. So I know this is great stuff and it's helping a lot of people. And this presentation can definitely help you and your projects too. So just to be clear though, this is not technical commissioning. If you're here looking for how to do an electrical high pot test, or if you're looking for the specific details of how to do HVAC test and balance, or if you're looking for the specific pipe flushing standards for the food process processing industry, you're not going to get that here. That's not what this presentation is about. But the 
technical commissioning is not actually what's missing on projects though, is it? There's a lot of smart people working on projects and they'll get the testing completed one way or the other. What's missing on projects are the project management aspects that are supposed to go around the technical commissioning. What's missing are the systems and controls to manage commissioning starting much earlier in projects. Let's look at a simple org chart. The three main project functions, of course, are design, construction, and commissioning. You got to get it designed, you got to get everything installed, and then you got to make sure that everything works during commissioning. Or if you have an EPC contract, your design and construction are part of the same contract uh, in the case of an EPC contract. Either way, uh, this applies to both contract structures. Too often, though, commissioning is tucked under one of these existing groups. Maybe the design groups may be responsible for commissioning, or commissioning is another subactivity to the construction groups. Projects are often structured this way right from the beginning in contracts, and they're already in trouble before the pro project even starts. There's typically someone to manage the design. We, When we're working on projects, there's definitely a design manager involved to coordinate all the aspects of design. And there's definitely someone involved to manage construction. There's an entire industry dedicated to construction management. But where are the project management processes to lead and manage commissioning? On a lot of projects, they don't even exist. There's a gap in the industry. Commissioning is really still in its infancy. Of course, we've been doing commissioning for decades, but it's only recently that commissioning is being recognized as its own discipline and recognized as a primary function to successfully complete projects. Some industries are ahead of others in this regard. The aerospace industry, for example, is the most advanced, and you can check out some of my other content I've put out there on commissioning um, of the James Webb Space Telescope. That stuff has to work. So they've got very thorough and complete commissioning processes. The oil and gas industry, of course, is very uh, advanced in their commissioning processes due to significant safety aspects and logistical challenges of working offshore. But commissioning as a discipline is only now starting to emerge in several other industries. Now, commissioning is complex. Both the technical aspects and the project management aspects are complex. And I will say you can't really learn the technical commissioning aspects in a course. I'm sorry. It's just the only way to learn technical commissioning is to be part of an experienced team and get hands-on experience. It's too dangerous, right? There, There isn't anyone that is going to tell you how to do, for example, a high voltage short circuit test on a large synchronous condenser and then send you on your way to go get it done. It's just not going to happen. You have to be part of a team that knows how to do this safely to see how it's done. It's like a kid riding a bike. She's not going to learn to ride a bike by reading a book. She's got to get on the bike. She's got to get the bumps and bruises if she wants to figure this stuff out. Now... There is a distinction between technical commissioning and commissioning project management. They do require different skill sets. And when it comes to commissioning project management, you can learn this stuff and you must learn this in advance before trying to lead or manage commissioning. I've seen it happen too many times. Just last year, I was working with a contractor and they brought in someone to coordinate commissioning. He was a smart enough guy. He understood the technical aspects of commissioning but he had no understanding of the commissioning process. He was on the project, I think only two months before they realized that he didn't really understand this stuff and they had to fire him and get rid of him from the project. In these lead and management roles, you're expected to lead and deliver. There's no time to figure this stuff out as you go. When the project is falling behind, you can't figure this stuff out. It doesn't take long to get left behind. It's similar to surgery. Do you want the surgeon who leans over to the nurse and whispers in her ear, what do I do? Of course not. You want the surgeon who has studied the process and knows exactly what to do, including when something goes wrong. It is way too risky to figure out how to manage commissioning on the fly. There's just too much time and money at stake. And it's not reasonable to expect the technical commissioning guys to figure this stuff out. By the time they're involved, it's already too late in the project and they have their own tasks to complete. And the bad decisions early in the project have already been made. For project managers, they especially need to know how to properly plan for commissioning. I would honestly say 
that finishing projects during commissioning should be a project manager's most fundamental role, right? To make sure the project can actually finish on time. But it's not project manager's fault that they don't understand the commissioning process. This stuff isn't explained in any project management literature that's out there. Completing projects during commissioning is not well understood by a lot of people. So this is the gap in the industry, and this is the missing project management processes that are missed on a lot of projects. When this is missed on projects, it's no wonder that projects are late and over budget. And this is the gap that we help you fill. This presentation is for project managers that need to understand how to finish projects during commissioning, and also for technical commissioning experts that want to move up in projects to lead or manage commissioning. With the gap that exists in the industry, with no systems and controls to manage commissioning, projects are just gambling. You have no way to affect the outcome of your project. You just roll the dice and hope for the best at the end. It's a crapshoot. I'm going to show you how to finish your projects during commissioning with much more predictability. And at the end of this presentation, if you'd like some more help, I'll show you how with our Commissioning Academy program. So if this all sounds interesting, then I'm glad you're here. I want to share some statistics with you that are quite concerning. This is Professor Bent Flivberg. He's from the University of Oxford. He has a database of over 16,000 projects from the last several decades. He's also written a book. It's called How Big Things Get Done. If you haven't read it, you should. It's an excellent book. Professor Flivberg's research shows that only 8.5% of projects are on time and on budget. That means over 90% of projects are late and over budget. That's terrible. That's almost as bad as the weather forecast industry. They're always wrong. There are, of course, lots of contributing factors to this underperformance on projects. There's huge civil challenges and large earth moving efforts, uh, heavy civil work, underground conditions, lots of challenges there for sure. There's procurement delays, getting the equipment to site so it can get installed and ready for commissioning. Construction productivity, there's often lots of uh, civil work for concrete placement and construction activities to achieve on a daily basis. There's, of course, lots of projects, uh, challenges on, on uh, large projects. However, the complexity of completing projects during commissioning is one of the main contributions to delays when there are no systems and controls to manage commissioning. I'm going to show you how to do this on your projects so you can beat these odds and improve your project success. So just check it in. How is this sounding? Is this making sense? Do any of these statistics concern you on your projects? If you have any questions, just shoot them in the chat and I'll get them answered. When I do this presentation, the first thing that people wanna know is what to do. Just give me the checklist, give me the procedures, give me the exact steps I need to follow. For example, just tell me how to commission a combustion gas turbine. And when I get these types of questions as the first things that are asked, I know that these are the wrong questions to be asking. There's a little bit more to it than that, right? You're not gonna get the six page document that walks you through the steps of exactly what to do. When I get these types of questions, I already know that these people are in trouble on their projects. So first, let's address the problems of what not to do before we talk about what to do. Projects are having problems. We know this because the data shows us this, that nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. Projects are losing time during commissioning and they're missing deadlines. But why is this? Why are projects struggling? We need to address these problems before I teach you what to do. And there are three common mistakes that are made on projects. And just by fixing these three mistakes, you can see a huge improvement on your projects. So what are these three mistakes? The first mistake is leaving commissioning to the end of projects. We've been told that commissioning takes place at the end of projects. You have to finish construction once everything's installed, then you test everything at the end. But this is actually not true. This is, of course, what most projects do. They roll the dice at the end. And maybe you've had this experience on projects. But this is what leads to problems on projects. In fact, to be successful, the commissioning process starts right at the beginning during your feed processes. 
when commissioning is left to the end, you have no way to be proactive. All the problems are left at the end of the project and there's no time to recover. It's exactly like Stephen Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. We must be doing this on our capital projects to have commissioning project management processes right from the start. There's no way to successfully finish projects unless you start preparing in advance. All projects that have ever finished on time and on budget, this is what they are doing. They're implementing commissioning project management right at the beginning of their projects. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Mistake number two is having commissioning as a sub-activity to another group. Remember the org charts we just looked at? On many projects, one group is tasked with commissioning. Maybe commissioning is part of construction and a construction responsibility, or commissioning is the design group's responsibility to figure out at the end of the project. But this never works. Commissioning is not an individual effort. Commissioning must be treated as its own discipline with all groups on the project involved. Each group, of course, has their primary role, right? The design guys, they need to focus on getting the systems designed and the construction groups need to focus on getting equipment installed. And we need these groups to do their good work to contribute to, their, to the project so they can focus on getting their part of the project complete and having their primary role contributing to the project. But when we give them the responsibility of commissioning as well, of course, they're going to leave it to later. They need to focus on their primary role, right? They need to focus on design. They need to focus on construction. And they're going to push commissioning till later. And this is what causes commissioning to be forgotten about until it's too late. Instead, commissioning requires a one-team approach with everyone focused on their primary responsibility and everyone involved in commissioning. All subsystems must come together as one functioning plant process or one functioning system at the end of your project, and all groups must do the same to come together at the end for commissioning. All groups have a role, right? The construction groups are involved, and they be, may be involved in some of the, the vendor startups or pre-commissioning activities, flushing activities. Um, their contributions are certainly important to the project. Design groups have a role. This is where some of the subject matter experts may come from, uh, equipment experts responsible to confirming some of the designs. There'll be consultants involved. The client will be involved for sure. Um, everybody needs to come together for one commissioning team and therefore one commissioning process. So it doesn't matter which group you're part of. There's one commissioning process to follow and one team approach for one final finish of the project. So I see a question. Commissioning starts at feed stage. What are the deliverables at this stage? Good question. I've got some slides coming up on that, and we're going to definitely cover that in what that specifically looks like during the feed stage. So unfortunately, when commissioning is a sub-activity to one group, this leads to a conflict of interest. You can't have the fox guard the hen house, right? When you think about it, there's lots of money involved in projects. There's lots of cost pressures. There's lots of schedule pressures. And when groups are under pressure to deliver, it's human nature to try to cut corners, right? You, you can't fault anyone for that. They have their own objectives to meet for design and for construction, and they need to meet those objectives. However, you can't have one group verifying their own work. You have to have an overall commissioning team that's verifying not for one specific group, but for the project verification to make sure that this stuff is all working at the end. All projects that are successful with commissioning, they have one team with everyone involved, one commissioning process, and one final in-service date. Now, of course, this is extremely challenging on projects because everyone belongs to different organizations, right? There's several contracts that are awarded and the contracts naturally divide up all the groups. So how do you keep everyone aligned for successful commissioning? I'm going to show you how. So mistake number three is still using paper and spreadsheets to manage commissioning. And many projects are still doing this. They're still using paper and spreadsheets to manage commissioning. They've got paper sign-offs or they've come up with their all singing, all dancing custom spreadsheet in Excel to manually track all their commissioning. And maybe this used to work 20 years ago, but... Today's projects are far too complex. There's too many documents. There's too much information. 
and it's impossible to keep track of all of these items manually on projects. Besides, we need real-time data to make informed decisions. We can't wait until Friday's spreadsheet update to get the most current information. We need access to information now. So even if you've used commissioning software in the past and it wasn't very good, there are so many better options available now that you need to check out commissioning management software to be using these systems on your projects. There are actually over 20 different software vendors on the market and each has its pros and cons. Um, each are tailored uh, slightly differently to different industries, but all are flexible to meet your project specific needs. Um, and we review how to select the right commissioning management software for your projects in our Commissioning Academy program. Now, if you don't already have this list that's up on the screen, you can go to learncsu.com. And at the bottom of that page, there's a link where you can access this list. Be sure to go to learncsu.com and download this list. You can check out the, the vendors that are available. CMS software helps you plan and manage the work. It helps you keep track of all the big details and all the small details so that nothing gets missed. And more importantly, it's what's used to manage your gated commissioning process. We don't necessarily just want to be using this as a glorified spreadsheet. It has the capabilities to manage our overall commissioning process. And I'll show you what that looks like. When we use these systems, we can make real-time data-driven decisions rather than guessing on our projects. Um, when we're working on projects, we can't expect everyone on projects to understand commissioning. Everyone has their own zone of genius in how they contribute to the project, and we need them to focus on those areas of expertise. But commissioning is complex. Um, not everyone on the project is going to get to the level of detail in commissioning that some of the people on the commissioning team are, but we need to have a tool that allows everyone to see how their role contributes to a successful project finish during commissioning. Everyone needs to understand very clearly what they need to do and when it needs to be done. And CMS software is that tool to guide the team to a strong finish when it's used properly. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that software is still not the magic solution that's going to solve all your commissioning problems. It's a tool, of course, right? And it's used to model your commissioning process. Out of the box, it's it's very generic, but without being set up correctly, it's it's quite useless. So you still need to understand these commissioning fundamentals if you want to put the software to good use. If you're missing commissioning project management software, or if you're missing the fundamentals of commissioning project management, then when you start looking at some of these software packages, you'll probably wish that you never even seen them before. <laughs> I do talk to a lot of commissioning experts that are concerned that project teams are becoming too reliant on these software systems that nobody actually understands commissioning to set the tools up properly. So I just don't want you to go away thinking that this software list is your answer, because if you try to get one of these set up on your project without having well-defined commissioning processes, then you'll probably get very frustrated with your new software and probably stop using it. And your project team certainly won't want to use it. They'll probably go back very quickly to their tried and tested uh, paper and spreadsheet processes that they've been using for years, and you'll end up with another failed process improvement. I don't want that to happen. So these are the three common mistakes that are made on projects is not starting with the end in mind, having commissioning as a sub activity and still using paper and spreadsheets on projects. And these are why projects are struggling with commissioning. And if you fix just these three things, you've already made huge improvements on your projects. When projects are making one or more of these three mistakes, it's because they lack a project management approach to commissioning. And this is what we refer to as cowboy commissioning. Your projects are inefficient, you're missing deadlines, everything is unplanned and everything is unorganized. And it's one of the main reasons that commissioning is a shit show at the end of your projects. It's easy to avoid these mistakes when you implement commissioning project management processes on your projects. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So your projects can avoid cowboy commissioning. So how is this sounding? Is this making sense so far? Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, just let me know in the chat and I'll get them answered.
So these are some of the problems that project teams are encountering on projects. These are the, some of the symptoms of cowboy commissioning. Your transition from construction to commissioning is likely disorganized and things are incomplete. There's no structured, organized construction complete and then handover and resumption of activities during commissioning. It's just kind of haphazard and disorganized. Uh, your commissioning is probably delayed once you get into pre-commissioning and commissioning by constant snags. And these might not even be big items that are holding you up. They could be just a, a ton of small items, uh, missing VFD setting, a rolled wire, a missing cable. These are all small items, but when you you add them up, it they become uh, constant showstoppers. They're holding you up. It's like a death by a thousand cuts. And we definitely want to avoid that where all these small items are causing snags during commissioning because it just delays the work so significantly. It's pretty common on projects that commissioning is squeezed into half the time that was originally planned, right? You're working 16 hour days to try and recover. I'm pretty much describing almost every project, aren't I? And you lose time during commissioning and you end up missing your project and service date. These are all very common problems on projects. Now, it's likely because of these mistakes that are being made on projects. It's because you're not managing commissioning using project management systems and controls for commissioning. It's not because you're missing technical commissioning. It's because you're missing the project management frameworks that go around commissioning. You likely have no systems-based approach through all stages of your project, starting earlier during your feed process. We need to be through our project systematization processes, uh, splitting up our system, our project into subsystems and taking this systems-based approach through design, through construction, through commissioning, so that all activities align identically with our project startup sequence to achieve our project and service date. Another mistake commonly made on projects is that you're planning your projects from left to right. And this is what most projects will do, right? Um, the only way to complete your project, like we talked about earlier, is to begin with the end in mind and plan from right to left. But that typically isn't what happens on projects. Uh, projects will focus on the design and get the design portions completed. After that, then we'll work on some of the construction activities and that will then drive what's required for commissioning. And you'll never meet your project and service date planning left to right. Instead, you need to be planning from right to left is your project and service date, however many years in advance, what's required to meet that is, of course, a successful startup, right? What's required for a successful startup uh, is successful commissioning. What's required for successful commissioning? Construction. Commissioning then drives construction. Construction then informs design. That's the only way projects are planned successfully is to plan from right to left. Another common problem or a common mistake I see on projects is project teams are using their CMS software only as a tracking database. And this is uh, one of its more simple functions of what it can do, but it's supposed to be used to model your commissioning process, to replicate your workflows with a time component within the software and identify to everyone working on the project what is required and when it needs to be done. Without using the time component of your software, then without having these embedded in your commissioning workflows, the software is just a glorified spreadsheet and you might as well get rid of it and go back to your Excel spreadsheets because it's not being used to its proper use to manage your commissioning processes. Another mistake I see projects make is when only a handful of people understand what's required for commissioning. And this is this is common. Commissioning is complex, and it's, it's not reasonable for us to expect everyone to be a commissioning expert. However, it's also not helpful when only your commissioning experts know what's required for commissioning. Often, commissioning experts get to site later in the project, and then they're upset when things aren't ready. Well, Everyone needs clear instruction of what is required, even if they don't fully understand all the details of commissioning. They need to know what they need to do and when they need to do it so that commissioning experts have what they need to do their job when they get to site later. And without some comprehensive method to track all the details, not everyone's going to be aware of what's required for commissioning. Having the details buried in some outdated spreadsheet is not helpful. We need to use our software 
as a communication tool to help everyone understand what is required for commissioning. And one of the other mistakes I see projects often make is you're using contracts to get the work started, but you're not using contracts as a tool to finish. Usually when you look in a lot of contracts, they're pretty light on commissioning details, right? Maybe there's some technical commissioning requirements that are in contracts, but they're likely missing the commercial and project management requirements for commissioning. And this is what leads to a lot of confusion at the end of your projects because everyone spends more time stuck in meetings arguing about how to finish the project during commissioning rather than following the already defined processes that should have already been defined in contracts. So these are a lot of the common mistakes that I see on projects. Um, is this making sense so far? It, does this sound like your projects? Are you doing some of these mistakes? Are you doing none of, none of these mistakes? Um, how have your projects gone in relation to your experiences with some of these mistakes? All right, so let's get into some good stuff here. There are three parts of commissioning project management. There are your planning frameworks, there are your construction completions frameworks, and then there's your on-site commissioning and startup frameworks. And these are what makes up the integrated commissioning framework. When the integrated commissioning framework is established early in your projects, your on-site commissioning becomes so much easier. You're able to complete commissioning with ease. There's no delays and very few snags. Of course, there's always going to be something, but very few snags that are really going to cause any significant delays. You can have confidence that you can meet the deadlines on your projects and you're able to save significant time and money on your projects by completing projects more efficiently. Most importantly, you're able to deliver high quality systems that can be used for decades of reliable operation. However, when you're missing these commissioning project management frameworks, it may seem like you're making progress on your projects until commissioning starts, of course, right? And then nothing works. Eh, things are missing. There's constant delays. You're losing time during commissioning and it's a scramble to get things finished. You're panicking to try to keep your head above water as you likely have executives breathing down your neck, demanding results, right? What you end up with is cowboy commissioning. Without commissioning project management frameworks on projects, what a project teams do to try and fix this? Well, it's pretty typical to dump everything on the commissioning guys to sort it out at the end of the project, right? You treat them as the wizards that'll show up at the end and work their magic, get this stuff all figured out and make everything better. People are working 16 hour days and seven days a week to try to recover. That's all very common. I guess the approach is just have your fingers crossed and hoping the project will eventually end, you'll get through it, right? But we all know that hope is not a plan. The end of the project, when this occurs, the blame game starts. Everybody starts pointing fingers of what went wrong and who didn't do something right. The claims start to pile up the end of the project. And I guess the plan then is to just try to figure it out in court later, right? But this is hardly a good approach to projects. There is a better way. That better way is by implementing these commissioning frameworks early on your projects. You need to be establishing the defined processes to follow and the specific controls to monitor your commissioning progress so that there's no surprises on projects and everyone has an easy to follow process right from the beginning of projects that everyone understands. You need to have the project management controls in order to make informed decisions during commissioning so that commissioning goes much smoother with no delays, and no snags. Sounding good? Does this almost sound too good to be true? <laughs> well, I'm going to show you how to do this because this is true and I've done it on projects. And with it, when this is done properly, properly, it's, it all comes together uh, quite easily at the end of your project. Okay. So these are the details of what's included in each framework. And this will answer your pressure, your question there uh, on uh, what are the deliverables that are required during the feed stage? We'll go through that here, but first, why is it called integrated commissioning framework. Well, that's because commissioning project 
management must be integrated into all early stage of projects. We must have commissioning embedded into procurement processes, into our design processes, into our construction processes, and during our construction completion processes. Remember, there's one commissioning process to follow through all stages of the project. So that means one commissioning team, one commissioning process, regardless of which group you're part of. It's the only way that this all comes together at the end of your project. So let's go through each framework here. The first uh, is the planning framework. And there's 10 project management frameworks that make up the planning framework. The first one is contracts. Uh, it's one of the reasons commissioning team needs to be involved earlier is to provide input to contracts to define how the project is going to be completed. So not only just the technical requirements need to go into contracts for commissioning, we need to be defining all the commercial and project management aspects that go into contracts as well. This is for our engineering contracts. This is for our construction contracts or EPC contracts, if those are the, the same group. These are for all of our procurement, equipment procurement contracts to make sure that equipment is being properly tested off site. Contracts are the first tool to get the work, the project started, but also need to define how the project is gonna be completed later during commissioning. So you were asking about the fee process and that's part of our important planning frameworks here as well. So through our feed processes, there's critical design reviews that we need to have commissioning input, we need to have operations input. And this would be at our preliminary design reviews to make sure that we're getting feedback from our commissioning groups into the design processes. This would be at our detailed design reviews. And the input here is really the lessons learned. So projects are often really good at gathering lessons learned at the end of projects, but projects are typically pretty bad at actually getting those lessons learned applied into next projects. This is the process to do that. If you've ever gone through a lessons learned in the past, um, the document is completed and then it's likely quickly filed away and forgotten about and never included in the next project. Well, this is how that happens is we need to be getting that feedback from our commissioning experts at the end of projects and having them involved earlier in the project during feed to input those lessons learned during preliminary design, during detailed design, so that we can have confidence that what's being generated during design is going to match and align with what's needed for later in the project during commissioning, even if that's years later in the project. There's also likely some very detailed design packages that will require a bit more oversight and input for, from some of the groups involved in projects. So this might be your uh, control systems that are going to be on the project. These packages might require a series of design workshops where uh, the process control narratives are reviewed in much more detail to make sure that how uh, the control narratives are being defined is actually going to align with what's required during commissioning and uh, startup for operation. And also to make sure that there's no misinterpretation on what's being defined in process control narratives, in how people are actually implementing this during design so that it's actually going to work later during commissioning and operations. So I hope that answers your question, but those are some of the, the inputs, uh, feedback that's required and some of the deliverables that are going to come out of your feed process by having the commissioning guys involved early in the project to provide this input. And by no means is that the entire commissioning team. You're not going to have everybody involved this early in the project, but you do need to have the key individuals involved to provide this input, to provide this feedback and have that continuity through all stages of the project. So the next planning framework is our factory acceptance testing and integrated factory acceptance testing. We'd all be very familiar with factory acceptance testing for some of the standard equipment. If you have a pump and you need to run it for a few hours and measure three points on the pump curve, we've been doing that for decades and, and that's all generally well understood. But when it comes to some of the more complex systems, say your control systems again, we need to be testing these systems in an integrated manner in the factory, testing both the hardware and the software. A lot of projects may test the hardware cubicles, but software is such a critical key component to the functionality of these cubicles that the cubicles are useless without the software, right? So we need to be testing both the hardware and the software in the factory to make sure that these cubicles are gonna work by the time they get to site. 
a lot of projects don't do this. They do their software integration on site for the first time. I've got a good case study I'll show you here coming up that contrasts two projects that did this approach and didn't and kind of how that resulted. Next planning aspect is our project systematization. So how are we taking the tag lists from the project? How are we separating these up into different subsystems? And how is this being defined in our feed processes so that we can have a subsystems-based approach through design, through construction, through commissioning to align identically with our project startup process? And this is another reason to have the commissioning guys involved earlier in the project is to help define some of this project systematization so it lines up through all stages of the project. The next planning aspect is our gated commissioning processes. So how are we defining our pre-commissioning processes, our commissioning processes, uh, startup and performance verification? What are the workflows that we're following? What are the gated milestones that are being defined? And how are these milestones being signed off by subsystem as each subsystem transitions through these workflows? Next aspect is our commissioning management software. Once we've got a lot of our systems and processes defined, then how are we using the software to model these processes? What's being loaded into the software? How is our project systematization being um, implemented into our software systems? And how are some of the project groups expected to use the software on projects? And ideally our commissioning management software is defined in our contracts so that there's no misunderstanding. Everyone understands that they're going to be using this software, expectations to use it on a daily basis, what information is going to be in and out of the software, um, an important aspect to define. So I see a question, will you make the link to this recording available to us? Yes, I will. Um, takes a little bit of time once we're done here to process it, but I should have it out later today or tomorrow morning for sure so that you can have access to the recording and check it out. So once we get uh, a fair ways through our planning processes, then we're going to want to define how this all comes together in a commissioning sequence and how this is all scheduled together in an overall commissioning plan. Our sequencing and our scheduling is a critical, critical aspect that really forms the backbone of how we're going to progress through the project to get to our project and service date. And if we put up our put up the upfront effort to define all of our planning elements and pr planning frameworks here in place, then that allows us to build our commissioning sequence and our commissioning schedule, and then model that within our commissioning management software. Of course, there's gonna be several forms and certificates involved. And when I say forms and certificates, I don't necessarily mean the paperwork aspects of these because these are all forms and certificates that are within our commissioning management software, but what forms are being used, what certificates are going to be signed for each milestone through our gated commissioning workflows. Um, how are these forms used? Who has authority to sign off each of these forms to progress through each of our um, gated uh, commissioning workflows? And how are these being used on our projects? We would all be familiar with the checklists and procedures that are required on projects. When we're going through our on-site commissioning, there's really no time to plan for any of these activities. Commissioning is just too fast paced that we need to have all of our documentation ready to go in advance before we do any of our on-site commissioning. So all the checklists that are required, any of the commissioning procedures that are required for verifying our process control narratives, all of this documentation needs to be prepared and planned in advance of our on-site commissioning so that when we get to on-site commissioning, we can strictly focus on execution and getting the work done without being bogged down with any of the paperwork. The, the checklists and procedures are also very important because it's not helpful if only one or two guys know what's going to be checked or how to go through a particular procedure. It's very important for everyone on the project to understand what's going to be checked, how we're going to do these procedures, and they're important communication tools to tell everybody how this is going to take place. I know lots of people, they don't like the paperwork. They just want to get out there and, and slam through it and get this stuff done. That's what leads to cowboy commissioning because nobody knows what's going on. Only a few people do. And the paperwork is important because it's a valuable communication tool to show everybody that the commissioning team knows what they're doing. And this is how we're going to go through it. Now, the last item, not because it's the least important, but safety is a critical aspect of commissioning as well. There's no point in doing any of this if we can't do it safely. And the commissioning team is relied upon heavily 
as the equipment experts to make sure that this all takes place safely, that all of our startups take place in a safe manner, that nothing's missed, that there's no surprises. So we need to be planning our safety processes in advance. So how are we going to be using our PSSR processes? How are we preparing PSSR checklists? What test readiness review meetings are required for small startups? For big startups, we need to be working closely with our HSC groups to make sure that our safety processes are fully defined before we get into our on-site commissioning. So those are our planning frameworks that are required. Next is our construction completion processes. And there's two project management frameworks that are required here. You may have been involved in punch list walk downs, um, but this is the process to more formalize this of how are punch list walk downs completed? How are punch items categorized? And then how are all of these items being loaded and tracked in our commissioning management software so that nothing gets missed? How are they categorized for A punch, B punch, C punch? How are we uh, identifying these items in the field with our joint walk downs between construction and commissioning groups? And then how is this all being documented and tracked so that nothing gets missed? The second framework to complete is our subsystem static completion. So what is the very specific definition of static completion for each subsystem? And how is this being achieved within our commissioning management software so that nothing gets missed? A big problem on project at this point is everybody's definition of done always seems to mean something different, right? The commissioning team's definition of static completion seems to mean something different from the construction's definition of static completion. And everyone spends more time arguing about what done actually means rather than actually focusing on getting the work done. So by putting in the upfront work and defining what does each specific subsystem stati static completion mean from both a physical equipment perspective, as well as from a paperwork and documentation perspective when it comes to O&M manuals and um, red line drawings, so that there's no surprises. Everybody knows exactly what that goalpost is to achieve static completion and can focus on completing those items to achieve that milestone and certificate sign off so that we can move through next stages of pre-commissioning and commissioning. And then the last uh, uh, planning framework here is, of course, our on-site commissioning and startup. And there's six project management frameworks that are required here. So what's required for pre-commissioning, commissioning, and startup? How are we flowing through our performance verification, trial operation, and handover on our projects? How are these uh, processes being defined? And how are these being tracked in our commissioning management software so that um, we're progressing each subsystem through our workflows and signing off at each uh, gated process that we're following through here? Um, I see, Ashwin, you have your hand up. So by all means, yeah, shoot your question into the chat there and I'll get your question answered. Um, cause I don't see your question. So absolutely let me know if you've got a question with your hand up there and I'll get it answered. So I know we just went through a lot there. Everyone just take a deep breath. Cause I know that's a lot to take in there. We went through the entire commissioning project management framework there, uh, and each step of the process, what I've described really is the only proven way to complete capital projects. This is the only framework that will allow you to meet your project and service date. Project teams, of course, will try to do it a lot of different methods, but none of them actually work, which is why nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. What I've described is the only proven and reliable way to methodically complete complex projects, period. This applies to all types of projects, it applies to all industries, and this is the proven method to complete projects. If you're not doing this on your projects, then this is one of the main reasons your projects are late. Okay, I see Ashwin's question. He says, I have experience in thermal power plant. I want to understand how do we handle short supply of material required during 
pre-commissioning activities. Absolutely. It's always a concern, right? That was one of the challenges. If there's procurement de uh, delays on projects, it, it can certainly be an issue. Um, we almost have to expect that there's going to be procurement delays on projects, right? We can't be planning our projects that tight that we're expecting everything to arrive on time because that just never happens. So when we're putting together and planning our project from a sequence and scheduling perspective, we want to be at least building in some of that buffer to know that if this item is going to be uh, a week or two late, then we can accommodate that. For really long lead items, like a six-month long lead item, uh, it could be a month or more late, right? We need to be um, a planning in our processes is... Should it be on time? This is how we're going to progress. But if we know there's a risk item here and that procurement item is going to be late, then what's our backup plan? What does our alternate sequence of commissioning look like so that we can still make progress on the project while that particular procurement item is delayed? Because we can't stop the project, right? We still have to continue making progress, which is why we need to have a contingency plan if that particular risk item is going to be late and we're not going to get that item delivered to site then we've got a backup plan where we can still progress the project as best we can. So I hope that answers your question. So I, I do get some questions at this point. If I've described this commissioning process and saying that this is the process to follow to complete projects, some people ask, well, what about Scrum or what about Agile or what about advanced work planning? And these aren't really for commissioning. These tactics can, of course, be used for design and construction, and they're very well suited for design and construction, but commissioning requires a different thought process. Commissioning requires a systems-based approach, and this is why I often see confusion with these other project management philosophies. The systems-based approach that is on the screen is the methodical process to complete projects. So don't get distracted by that other project management jargon. It's not actually what you need to complete projects. Focus on the fundamentals with the systems-based approach that we are discussing here today. So let me know in the chat. Is this making sense? Are you familiar with this framework? Have you applied it on your projects in the past? Let me know. So for some context, let's look at a possible timeline. The bulk of commissioning effort is actually in your commissioning planning frameworks. So let's say you have six months of commissioning at the end of your project, six months of like on-site, hands-on with the gear equipment. That six months of commissioning may require 18 months of planning in advance of your on-site commissioning starting. Um, this 18 months, of course, needs to align with your feed processes. So it might be a little bit longer, might be a little bit less, but that's generally um, a good timeline to consider. Maybe you've got a smaller project and you've only got two months of commissioning at the end of your project. So you may have 10 months of planning in advance of your two months of commissioning. Um, the bulk of the effort is really upfront during your commissioning planning efforts. And when commissioning project management frameworks are established earlier, earlier in your projects, completing construction and commissioning is much easier. I'm sure you've heard of the 80-20 rule. And when it comes to managing commissioning, the 80-20 rule definitely applies. 80% of the work is done during your planning stage. And this is what is missing on most projects, especially if you have commissioning as a subactivity to your design groups or your construction groups, because they're going to focus on design and they're going to focus on construction as we need them to do. And this 80% of the upfront effort is missed and they attempt to try and do it during the last 20% of your on-site commissioning. When you get the first 80% of your commissioning efforts done correctly, the last 20% during your on-site commissioning is actually quite easy. But when the first 80% is wrong or not done at all, the last 20% will be a nightmare. Nightmare. It's what leads to cowboy commissioning, right? It's just... When you're going through your on-site commissioning, it's just too fast-paced. There's too much information, and you can't possibly keep your head above water. So are these timelines making sense? Um, does this level of effort sound about right on your projects? This has definitely been my experience as the projects I've worked on. I've been brought in 18 months, two years in advance to 
plan and prepare for commissioning so that the last 20% goes much smoother. And when you take this approach, the end of your project comes together much cleaner than trying to scramble at the end by skipping all of your commissioning project management processes. So let's look at a case study. Now, these are two power projects that took place at the same time in Canada. These are fairly big projects, but if you work on smaller projects, these lessons learned apply to all sizes of projects. If you work on a $5 million project, if you work on a $5 billion project, big or small, these lessons definitely apply. So on Bipole 3, I was the commissioning manager for this project. The project took place between 2015 and 2018. Uh, this was a 2300 megawatt HVDC link that took place here in central Canada, and we were able to deliver this project on time and on budget. At roughly the same time, on the eastern coast of Canada, the Labrador Island link was taking place, and this project took place between 2012 and 2023. Now, there was lots of things wrong with this project, and it actually resulted in a public inquiry in 2020. You can read all about the public inquiry if you want at muskratfallsinquiry.ca, but there's one aspect that I want to highlight in a difference uh, in approach between these two projects is the approach to integrated factory acceptance testing, the software development and testing that took place in the factory. So this is a CBC headline from March of 2022 for the Muskrat Falls project. And the headline says, as software struggles persist, consultant says Muskrat Falls completion is impossible to predict. Certainly not a very good headline that you want to see about your project. In June 2022, uh, another CBC headline, software troubles blamed for $260 million Muskrat Falls cost increase. Uh, so you can see they're still having problems with their software even just last year, June of 2022. Earlier this year, in March 2023, Newfoundland Hydro President optimistic about Muskrat Falls despite discovery of new problems. So they're still discovering new problems related to the software. And the issue was uh, earlier this year, they were still having trouble transmitting at full megawatt powers. I think they were only able to transmit it at half power. So towards the end of the project, they're still having software issues that they're trying to work through. Now, we can only assume, well, because of the software headlines, we know that they're still doing software development earlier this year in 2023, but we can only assume that during factory acceptance testing, it was only completed on the hardware aspects of their control and protection cubicles. Had they gone through a fully integrated hardware and software integration in the factory, then these issues would certainly not exist. We wouldn't be getting these CBC headlines, right? And it's certainly not reflected in the Muskrat Falls public inquiry that there was a thorough and complete integrated factory acceptance testing. Contrast that to the approach that we took on Bipole 3. We had a six-month period of time that was dedicated to integrated factory acceptance testing of the hardware and the software cubicles. There was 30 cubicles at the southern terminal and 30 cubicles at the northern terminal. And we had all 60 of these cubicles in the factory in Germany, all wired together in a simulated environment that we could fully replicate uh, in a simulated manner, uh, the full 2300 megawatt transfers. And we spent that full six months going through every normal operating scenario, every fault operating scenario, and extensively tested that software to know that the hardware and the software was working correctly before those cubicles even left the, the factory. And this was all done 18 months prior to the project and service date. Because of this proactive offsite testing, 18 months before the project and service date, we were able to plan for a July 1st, 2018 project and service date, and we met that date. In fact, when we were going through commissioning, there was no problems with the software because we knew that it worked. The only thing we were really looking for was wiring errors because that had been disassembled and shipped to site and then and reinstalled. So we found the odd minor rolled cable or missing termination, but we had confidence that the software worked and it allowed us to progress through commissioning at the uh, progress that we required to be able to meet our project and service date. So this is one of the major lessons learned that I took away from these two projects that took place at the same time is we need to be using more sophisticated methods to 
properly test our hardware and our software much earlier in the project. We can't integrate software for the first time on site. Now, I know a lot of projects still do this. And even on smaller parts of this project, there was portions of the project that did this and did their software integration on site for the first time. I've never seen that go well. And the parts of the project that did that, they ran into lots of problem of safety hazards and equipment damage and delays as they tried to integrate their software that late in the project. So I've taken this lesson learned away from my projects. Uh, I hope you see this lesson learned as well to test early, test often, and test the software components, the controls components early in your projects because they always seem to cause a problem at the end of projects. So we've covered a lot of good information here today. Let me know in the chat if this is making sense. And if you can follow this commissioning ma project management framework on your projects, can you promise me that you'll begin with the end in mind, you'll prevent commissioning from being a subactivity to any individual group, you'll have everyone involved in commissioning, and promise me that you'll stop using paper and spreadsheets on your projects. To correct these three mistakes, we've discussed how commissioning can be simplified into a three-part project management framework, uh, having commissioning frameworks to plan your project, commissioning frameworks part of your construction completions, and commissioning frameworks part of your on-site commissioning and startup. Does this all seem doable on your projects? Can you go ahead and go implement this on your projects? And if you're ready to implement this, what's going to be your first step on projects? What I've given you today are the project management systems and controls that successful project teams use to complete commissioning and meet their project deadlines. What I've given you are the commissioning project management frameworks required if you want to avoid making costly mistakes on your projects, you want to avoid cowboy commissioning and the scramble at the end of your projects, you want to avoid missing your project deadlines, and you want to avoid the consequences of a failed project. Of course, we all want this on our projects, and I'm sure that you want to get it right the first time on your projects. You want confidence with commissioning rather than gambling at the end of your project. You want to skip the 10-year learning curve and get your project started the right way, and you want to work on the biggest and best projects. So the way I see it is you have two choices. Your first choice is you can go ahead with the knowledge that I've given you today and you can go figure this out on your projects on your own. And this is a totally legitimate way to go. This is what I did. I spent the last 10 years seeing what works on projects and seeing what doesn't. And you can go ahead and do the same. You can spend the next decade figuring this stuff out. You can roll the dice and see how your project turns out at the end of your projects. And unfortunately, you'll have to learn a lot of these lessons the hard way. Option number two is you can apply these commissioning and startup best practices on your projects right now. I'll give you the systems and controls you need to successfully complete your project commissioning. You can skip the 10-year learning curve and you can avoid the consequences of having a failed project. You can set your projects and your career up for success right now. You can avoid having headlines like the Muskrat Falls project uh, on a project that you've worked on. How does this sound? Does this sound like a good approach? Do you want this for your projects right now? If option number two sounds like the better approach so that you can understand how this process works before starting your next project, to get all the systems and controls in place for successful commissioning, to get all the templates, procedures, forms, and certificates so that you can start with a subsystems approach on projects through all phases, to get all the commissioning workflows you need, all the planning details that are required, the software you need to use, how to get it all set up. You want to cut the learning curve down, and instead of many years, I can give you all this stuff in just a matter of a few weeks. If you want everything you need for commissioning project management in one package, then I want to introduce you to our Commissioning Academy Integrated Completions Program. This is literally the most comprehensive program for commissioning project management ever created. Maybe there's something with more information, but I've never been able to find it. Maybe there's a, a company that has internal training that off, offers some of, some of this, but 
it's not available to the public and it's it's not available to to help people understand this stuff really quickly this literally closes the gap that exists on projects remember the org chart that we looked at and the gap we identified in the project org chart this program fills that gap and is the fastest method to get up to speed of what's required for commissioning project management these are the processes that people and projects need to be successful with commissioning project management. This is the missing piece on projects, the project management systems and controls to make sure commissioning is successful. It's, it's painful to watch people struggle on projects without this stuff because we know the solution. The answers are all right here. But without this, people continue to struggle on projects until they learn over 10 years how to do this stuff. It drives me nuts. People don't need to struggle on projects. They need these commissioning project management processes to guide them to success. And this is the reason I created this program. It closes the gap and stops people from struggling to complete their projects. This is perfect for people at all levels. If you're a beginner, you get everything you need so you won't have to make any mistakes. If you're a project manager and you need to understand how to finish projects, and really, if you're a project manager, you should know how to finish projects. If you're the project manager, it's your primary function. Or if you have a strong technical background and want to move up in projects, then this program is your best option. You get a massive head start when you understand these methods before starting projects. If you're an intermediate at this stuff, you've got some of it figured out, then this is your opportunity to finally fix your cowboy commissioning your projects are probably late and over budget, just like most are, and you get to fix your cowboy commissioning. If you're an expert and you've been at this stuff for quite a while, then you can upgrade your commissioning processes to industry best practices used by all successful projects so that you can make your commissioning even easier. I'll show you, I'll show you how to do all of this on your projects and it's super simple to get started. You can go to learncsu.com, enter your information on that page, and I'll text you back right away. We can have a quick, quick chat and I'll see what is the best option to get you started. There are two ways that we help you in your projects. First is our course, our Commissioning Academy training program. This is our signature training program that walks you through exactly how to apply these commissioning project management principles on your projects. This is a good option for individuals that need to figure this stuff out on their next project. The other option we offer is consulting services for organizations that need a bit more support. You get access to all of our course content plus I work directly with you and your project team to get this implemented within your project delivery processes. I provide guided support to implement this on your projects fast. This is a good solution for organizations that must improve their project delivery processes for commissioning. Both options, you get the information you need for commissioning project management. And since nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget, this is how we help you and your project team improve these odds of completing projects. In addition to everything we've discussed, both options also include access to our three discipline modules. So our mechanical, electrical, and automation pre-commissioning and commissioning modules. So maybe you've got a really strong background in mechanical, but you're not as familiar with the electrical, or maybe you're really strong in the electrical, but maybe not as familiar with some of the, the automation commissioning. These modules at least give you a flavor and an understanding of all disciplines on the project so that you can see how all these subsystems integrate together for one functioning plant process. So people love these three modules. They're super helpful. You get access to our checklist and procedure database. I think we have over 180 templates and procedures that you can use as a template. It's sometimes super helpful to start with a, a document that you can modify and make specific to your project and, uh, make a few modifications, you're ready to go with whatever um, test documents you need to have in place. There's several case studies in the program that you can see how some of these principles are applied on projects. You get access to our forms and certificates library. So for example, one of the first things you're going to need is your commissioning kickoff meeting agenda. Well, you go into the forms and certificate library, you download the document, make a few small changes, send that out to your meeting attendees, done, on to your next task, saves tons of time. 
You get access to our private members LinkedIn group. Um, if you're working on projects going through the course here, you can collaborate with other people that are working on the course. Um, you can maybe find someone that's working on a project that's similar to yours all over the world. You can bounce ideas off them and see what's worked and what hasn't and brainstorm some ideas. It's super helpful to be able to reach out to other commissioning experts working all over the world. We are accredited by EIC. So what that means is when you complete the course and pass with a 80% uh, mark or better, we're able to issue an accredited certificate with the associated CEU and PDH uh, accredited hours saying that you've completed the course. This is all logged and registered at eicregistry.com showing everybody that you've completed the course and understand the commissioning project management process. You also get lifetime access. So if you're working on a project now, or if you're working on a project in two, three, however many years in the future, you've got access to all these resources, all the forms and certificates, all the checklists and procedure libraries that you can uh, draw upon, pull out the information and apply them to today's projects or any projects in the future. So this literally is everything you need to successfully complete your projects during commissioning. Go to learncsu.com and enter your information and we'll have a quick chat. Remember, you can also download the CMS software list at this link too. So enter your info, I'll text you back right away. We'll have a quick chat, answer any questions that you have. Or if you prefer, we can jump on a, a Zoom link. We can have a discussion. Um, but that's the way to get started is at learncsu.com. So if you do have all this figured out on your projects, and this is exactly what you're doing on projects, then that's fantastic. You're on the right track. Please keep up the good work. We need to improve project performance. And you're one of the project's leaders that are doing the right stuff to help projects succeed. But I know that most project teams have not figured this stuff out because the data tells us this, that nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. So this tells me that most projects don't have this stuff figured out. So if this stuff is all new to you, or if you've been part of a project that's struggled with commissioning in the past, or if you've been on this presentation multiple times, you've read through our emails, you've taken the mini course and you need more information, it means that you're still trying to figure out commissioning. It means you haven't been able to figure this stuff out on your own. And it means it's risky to your career and risky to your projects to continue to try to figure this stuff out on your own. It's time to get support because this is complex stuff. It takes a long time to learn. It took me 10 years to learn. Now, the support you need doesn't have to come from me, but you do need someone to show you how to do this. This is specialized project management. And if this is something you want to do, then I'm sorry, but you're not going to get these specialized skills from a few Google searches and a free webinar. There's likely a reason you're here. It's because you do need to figure this stuff out on your projects, either for the benefits of your projects or for the benefits to advance your career. However, you haven't been able to figure this stuff out on your own. Now, I do think it's possible for people to figure this out on their own. I did. It just took me 10 years to do that, of working on several diff different types of projects to get good at this stuff. It's just that there's too long of a learning cycle, though, to figure this stuff out on your own, right? When a project takes two or three or four years to complete, it can take that long to see if what you did two years prior was actually the right thing to do to make commissioning successful. And with a two to three year learning cycle, it can take several of these to get this stuff all figured out. 10 years is not uncommon. It's just not an efficient way to learn. The lessons are hard and slow to learn on your own, costing your projects lots of money, let alone the damage to your career when you don't get this stuff right. Now, a better way to learn this stuff is right here. And that's why I created this program to bridge the gap that exists on projects so you can get everything you need with just the click of a button. Don't waste the next 10 years trying to figure this out and make costly mistakes along the way, costly impacts to your projects, costly impacts to your career, 
think of the muskrat falls projects do you want that listed on your resume it's not really good when you're going to look for your next project and people see that that was your last project that you worked on you can get everything you need right here right now so i see a question on the cell phone pane i'm having difficult to progress yes okay so uh, if that's the case right below the link there you'll see um if it's not being recognized there's another link that you could submit your information on um without your cell phone so just look a little bit below there and you'll see an alternate way to to get accepted there for uh for both of you there um definitely click on that there's a little form you can fill out and uh we'll have a chat i do want to say that projects are brutal out there and I want you to be successful with this stuff. It's cutthroat. The construction industry is a $14 trillion industry with everyone trying to get their piece of the pie, right? There's people out there that do this stuff all the time and they know how to exploit the system. So I don't want you to get taken advantage of if you get this stuff wrong on your projects. Accept my help and I'll make sure you're successful on your projects. Now, for those of you that are ready to get a massive head start with commissioning project management, and I can see there's a, uh, a few of you that are, that's awesome. Go to learncsu.com, enter your information, and I'll text you back right away. If uh, your phone number isn't being accepted, then definitely go below, hit that alternate link and submit your information. I'll answer any questions that you have. We'll figure out what the best option is for you and get you enrolled right away. I'm looking forward to chatting with you once uh, we're done the presentation here and helping you and your projects succeed with commissioning. Okay, cool. How's everybody doing? I've got some time now. If there's any additional questions you have, enter them in the chat and uh, I'll get your questions answered. While you do that, um, there's typically a few questions that I often get at this point in the presentation. So I'll go through those and hopefully that can answer any questions you might have uh, or anything else you have in the chat. We'll go through it here right away. The first question I often get, of course, is, well, what are the costs? And when it comes to commissioning, there is really no one size solution that fits all. So when you enter your information at learncsu.com, we'll briefly have a quick chat. I'll answer any questions that you have. And I'll be able to find the best solution for you and your projects. And we can easily find a payment option that works for you. Now, what a lot of people do is get their company to pay because companies love to pay for our training. When you know how to properly plan and execute commissioning on projects, you can easily save projects a month or more of schedule. And what's a month of schedule worth on your projects? On the low end, maybe $100,000 per month, but... <laughs> Projects are expensive. It's more likely a million dollars or $10 million per month. And when you can save projects this kind of money, your company is happy to pay for this training. Projects are expensive, right? And nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. Companies, of course, want to avoid this. And when you know how to properly plan and execute commissioning, you can save a lot of time at the end of your project during commissioning. And that saves your company a lot of money. That's why companies are excited to get you into our training because they get significant value. So go to learncsu.com and submit your information. We'll get you the paperwork you need to submit to your HR so you can get your training approvals in place. Super simple. Could this integrated commissioning framework be applied to turnaround? Absolutely, same process for sure. And commissioning management software is a key aspect in uh, the turnaround process there for sure. Um, definitely applies. Um, lots of people do submit to their companies for approval. Some still choose to pay on their own. And that's a good choice too. They invest in training because they know how valuable they become to companies when they understand this stuff, valuable to their current company and valuable to other companies that are working on projects. And when you can save projects, millions of dollars with commissioning project management, you're in demand. You can literally pick your project and name your price. There is such a huge labor shortage on projects, as I'm sure you're aware, both for technical roles and for leadership roles. And projects are scrambling to try to fill these roles with people that understand this stuff. Remember the org chart that we looked at earlier with the gap we identified with project managers and technical commissioning? 
this gap in commissioning project management is real. It exists on most, pro most projects. And when you understand this stuff, companies are begging for people that can fill these roles. These are high paying leadership roles that can really make a difference on projects. Very few people actually understand commissioning project management. And when you understand this stuff, you're extremely in demand because you can deliver results and that's why people invest on their own to open up these career opportunities so they can work on new and exciting projects. So go to learncsu.com, enter your information, and we'll discuss what is the best option for you. I also sometimes get questions where people aren't convinced that systems and controls for commissioning can actually help you in your projects. One thing I can guarantee that without this, it's a gamble. You're rolling the dice and your project may be successful, but the data shows that it probably won't be, right? And that's not good for you, your projects, or your company. However, when you implement these systems and controls for commissioning, you're much more likely to achieve your project objectives. You actually have the ability to control your project outcome during commissioning. You reduce the risk of your projects being late and over budget. It's just good risk mitigation for both you and your project. I sometimes hear, I don't need this. We have consultants looking at commissioning. They'll fix everything. And while I'm sure you have very smart consultants involved on your projects, and they probably are excellent at providing the technical aspects of commissioning, I can almost assure you that you're not getting the commercial and project management aspects of commissioning that you need. It's not their role. They understand technical commissioning, but they don't understand commissioning project management. So let's have a chat and see if there's any gaps in what you think you're getting from your consultant. Contact me at learncsu.com. We can have a quick chat and see if there's any gaps in what you think you're getting from your consultants. I sometimes get asked, why do I need this commissioning project management? I'll just go get my PMP from the Project Management Institute. They'll teach me everything I need to know about uh, project management. Now, when you look at PMI's information, it's pretty light on details to finish a project. A lot of what you'll see from uh, PMI is information on what's required to start a project. The stuff I help people, prob uh, people with isn't included in a PMP. This is what's missing. And this is the missing part of projects of what's required to actually finish capital projects. You actually need the full picture. You need to know how to start projects and you need to know how to finish projects. So I've, I've actually included five PMP practice exams in the course. So that'll help you as well. You can go through those five practice exams. The best way to prepare to write your PMP, if that's something you want to do, is do a lot of questions. So each of these exams has 180 questions. There's five of them. You can go through those if you want to write your PMP, but at the very least to understand the starting aspects of projects so that um, everything in the course for completing projects aligns perfectly. Um, so yeah, uh, Augustine, how do you handle an equipment that did not meet basis of design during commissioning? Ah, oh, yes, that's always the dreaded concern is discovering major design issues later during commissioning that uh, weren't probably properly detailed or completed during the design phase. So we want to try and mitigate that, of course, by having uh, the commissioning folks involved earlier in the project during preliminary design reviews, detailed design reviews to make sure that those types of things aren't getting through and uh, being discovered later in the project. However, despite everyone's best efforts, some of those things can still sneak through, right? We're, we're doing our best to try and mitigate the risks on projects, but it's quite possible that there's a, a major design issue. We hope not. We hope it's just a small item, but if there is a major design issue, then that can cause a lot of problems later in the project. There's hopefully contingency plans that we have in place where we can move on to commissioning other aspects. But if it's a significant issue where new equipment needs to be procured or new designs completed, then yeah, that can cause a real problem during commissioning. But that's one of the proactive elements in our commissioning planning frameworks is to get that input earlier in projects so that that hopefully doesn't make it through later into the project. Um, another concern I often hear is maybe this all sounds good, but you're not sure you can 
get your organization on board to make this transition, right? There's too much bureaucracy and I get it. Organizational change is difficult. How do you get others on board with this? But if you don't get this stuff figured out, others will, and you'll get left behind. But that's exactly why I created this program is to make this transition easier for you and your organization. I'm here to help you and your projects improve and grow so we can have better project outcomes. I'm here to help you get this implemented on your projects. Some concerns I hear during questions here is that this doesn't apply to our projects or this doesn't apply to our industry, right? We do commissioning differently. To this, I say, of course you do commissioning differently. All projects do commissioning differently. Every project has a unique set of circumstances that require a unique solution for commissioning, right? The breakers to close and the valves to open, they're always project specific. The technical commissioning aspects are always different. Even projects within the same industry, two, no two projects are the same, right? There's always a unique solution from the technical aspects of commissioning. However, the systems and controls for commissioning are always the same, regardless of the technical details. And this is what is missing on projects. The same steps need to be taken for everything we've discussed today on all projects. It's always the same risk-based approach to manage commissioning so that your project-specific testing goes much smoother. Um, lastly, one of the questions I get is, I want to learn this stuff to understand commissioning project management, but I don't have time right now. And I'll tell you, when you're working on projects, there is never a good time, right? <laughs> you're always busy on projects. Even when you think you'll have time after your current project, that never happens. You're always on to your next project. There's never a break between projects. At the end of projects, the good guys are always scooped up for the next project and already busy on to the next one. That's why we designed our program to be part-time. You can complete it in a few hours, evenings, and weekends. There is no better time to get this stuff figured out than when you're busy. Complete it now when you're busy. That way, it will be much easier when you have more time. Um. So question, do you have data center commissioning experience? So I've never worked specifically on a data center, but a lot of the systems and controls for um, uh, building commissioning aspects for the building envelope and all the integrated equipment inside are, are all very similar, right? When you're integrating lots of network cubicles, it's similar to integrating control cabinets for control and protection systems for, say, HVDC or wastewater treatment plant or oil and gas. So the, the processes are all very similar, but no, I've never worked directly on uh, a data center. It's a, a huge industry, of course. They're building data centers all over the place. So um, definitely a, a good area of work to get into. All right. Any other questions? Shoot them in the chat. I'll make sure they get answered. Or if there's any other barriers you think that you might have to taking the next step to get this stuff figured out or and getting involved in the program, let me know in the chat. Um, if there's others that you think might need to know this stuff, let me know. I see there's several people that have already contacted me at learncsu.com. If you haven't, get your name in there. We can have a quick chat. I can answer any questions that you have and we'll figure out what is the best option for you. I'm here to help you lead and manage commissioning for your projects, to benefit you and your career, to benefit your projects, to benefit the global challenges that we all face together on completing large capital projects. So a few more things just before we conclude. Watch your email if you would like to join our next webinar. By all means, you can do that. I'll send you the link. You can join. Uh, I do this webinar every Friday, so you can join the next one. Absolutely, if you want. So come on back, ask any other questions at the next one. I'm happy to have you. Also, if you enjoyed this webinar and you think someone else would benefit from hearing it, I'll send you an email here shortly, a link where you can forward them the next Zoom link for next Friday's webinar, and hopefully they can join and see the value that commissioning provides to projects and how it can help them in their career and their projects as well. And lastly, a um, question came up earlier on the recording once uh, we're done here, Zoom takes a little bit to process it. So I'll try and get it out later today. If not, then for sure tomorrow morning, you can uh, get the replay. You can pass it on to others that you think should check this out. And hopefully we can help everyone figure out this complex topic on their projects. So 
commissioning can go much better. I just want to thank everyone for joining. There's been lots of great questions. Uh, I enjoy the, the collaboration and the discussion. And I hope to chat with you soon. Good luck on your projects and please stay safe. Have a great day, everyone.